Well, once a month, a small group meets at Our Lady of the Valley Parish in East Hampton to share ideas and conversation, something which is slowly being lost in today's digital age. The focus of their discussion is a man known as the Apostle of Common Sense and the Prince of Paradox. Steve Kiltonic reports now on why members hope this early 19th century genius is not lost to time. It's a Tuesday night at Our Lady of the Valley Rectory in East Hampton. Gathered in the fancy meeting room is a small group engaged in a lively discussion. Each generation is converted by the saint who contradicts it most. That's either from uh, his biography of St. Francis or St. Thomas. I can't I, I, I've read it. I've read yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. The talk revolves around the thoughts and writings of an English gentleman, G.K. Chesterton. Referred to as the Prince of Paradox and the Apostle of Common Sense, Chesterton was an early 20th century writer, poet, journalist, orator, philosopher, lay theologian, and literary art critic. Some would say he was one of the best writers and greatest thinkers of his generation or ours. Father Douglas McGonigal is the founder of the parish's Chesterton Group. They wish more people would learn about this six foot four, 300 pound giant of a man who was usually seen around town with a cigar in his mouth, wearing a crumpled hat and tiny glasses. He was a celebrity journalist, I think you might call him you know, today. He was somebody that people knew about, maybe not famous for being famous, but uh, you know, he was a, a voice that people uh, had heard and you know, read in papers, magazines, his books, and, and things like that. So he was, he was well known in his time as a commentator. Born in 1874 in London, Gilbert Keith Chesterton was a prolific writer. He wrote 100 books, hundreds of poems, five plays, five novels, including one on St. Thomas Aquinas, and some 200 short stories, including a popular series featuring the priest detective, Father Brown. All were marked with wit and humor. Despite his literary fame, Chesterton considered himself primarily a journalist. He penned over 4,000 newspaper essays, including 30 years worth of weekly columns for the Illustrated London News and 13 years of weekly columns for the Daily News. He, like uh, later C.S. Lewis, had this gift to be able to cut through all the falderall and in a very pithy way say, here's the issue and here's my take on it. Chesterton, a convert to Catholicism, defended the poor, the family, and the common man. He argued against 20th century ills like materialism. An apologetic, he also defended Christianity and the Catholic faith. Father Doug first became interested in Chesterton at UMass's Newman Center, where, as its director, participated in a student-run Chesterton group. Come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful. After Into prayer, the the fire a typical love. meeting usually Center starts with a classic Chesterton quote. Morality like art requires one to draw the line somewhere. So if we threw that out as the quote, you could talk about, well, which book did he write that in and what did he mean and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. Or you could talk about morality. Or well, you could talk about art. You know, you know, you can t you know, it's, it's a jumping off point. Father Doug laid out the ground rules for the meeting, or as he calls it, the college BS session. No hogging, no leapfrogging. You know, so you, know, you've got, you, know, you can say your piece, but you've you know, you got to leave room for other people to talk. And you can't go just scampering off in some totally different direction. Which could be politics, science, theology, or anything else. He comes down off the pulpit, takes off his, his, his vestments, lays them down on the front pew, and walks out the door. <laughs> Frank Brownwell is a retired English professor. I've read him for a good many years. I've known him for a long time, and he's a lot of fun, you know. And people who like Chesterton tend to be a lot of fun, too. Two of Brownwell's favorite Chesterton books are The Everlasting Man and The Man Who Was Thursday. He comes up with wonderfully surprising and often very moving ideas. And I have found that he's been quite an influence on me in my life of some very fundamental ideas, especially, you know, religious understanding. Chesterton once said, Christianity has not been tried and found wanting, it has been found difficult and not tried. He saw things with extraordinary clarity. And he says things that are just amazing, like one of his most famous remarks, people who believe nothing will believe anything. It's absolutely true. People with no beliefs will believe absolutely anything. 
And uh, so he's a, he's a very bracing figure. He was also a very nice man. Everybody who knew him found him to be remarkably kind and generous and humble. Greg Delosier is one of the original group members who joined some five years ago. Membership fluctuated over the years. At one time, it was only himself and Father Doug. Delosier has read the Father Brown series six times. He had insights about the faith that helped me see things in ways uh, because he, he uses paradox and it's something that sort of surprises you and makes you take a look at something in a way that you never might have before. He brings the faith to life in a way that I just have not experienced with any other writer. In this rare 1931 recording, Chesterton is adopted into the ranks of Holy Cross Crusader for his crusading work. I should like to take this opportunity of thanking you all for your enormous kindness. Chesterton's circle of friends included fellow writers and intellectuals H.G. Wells and George Bernard Shaw, as well as poet Maurice Baring and writer and confidant Hilaire Belloc, shown in this painting. Father Doug described an encounter between the portly Chesterton and the slender Shaw. And they come up to each other on the sidewalk, and uh, Chesterton is purported to have said, you know, Mr. Shaw, to look at you, you would think there was a famine in England. <laughs> to which Shaw is supposed to have replied, and to look at you, sir, you'd be the cause. <laughs> Father Doug mentions a Chesterton saying, which helps create the mood for the evening. He refers to Catholicism as combining the pint, the pipe, and the cross. But that's part of the whole thing, is that Catholicism is, you know, we dance, we smoke, we drink, you know, in moderation. <laughs> We're the party animals of the Christian world. Party animals withstanding, the Chesterton group ultimately provides the opportunity for astute discourse. We certainly have a, a lot of different interesting perspectives here, and it's just very energizing to engage in intelligent conversation. Uh, there are people out there, you know, especially in our parishes, who are hungry for a venue where they can gather and talk about ideas. You know, um, you know, not about the Kardashians, not about, you know, whatever the latest, you know, who's dancing with the stars. I love the, uh, the give and take of ideas and exploring ideas and talking with people about uh, things. So, you know, this is my uh, little escape once a month. Yeah. The group meets faithfully in the rectory at 7 p.m. every third Tuesday of the month. This isn't a men's only club. All are welcome. The only requirement is a Chesterton quote. For Real to Real, I'm Steve Kiltonic.